Have you ever felt you are stuck when it comes to improving your ability to speak English? Do you feel that your English is not making any progress at all? You want to get to the next level, but you just don't know what to do? If that's the case, I have good news for you. I am Dr. John Park, the author of Daring to Speak, 22 Ideas to Improve Your Ability to Speak English. A couple of days ago, I launched my channel, Daring to Speak, with my first video. After the launching, many people have showed support of and interested in my channel, Daring to Speak. There's someone that I'd like to say special thank you to and give a shout out to, and that is Peace Imagine. Peace Imagine made my day because Peace Imagine left the first comment, the first comment in my channel. And this is what Peace Imagine wrote. Recently, I was reading your book and looking for some audio clips. Your book encouraged and inspired me to upgrade my English skills. I am so happy to watch your first clip. Thank you. Peace Imagine, I want to say thank you for leaving your comment. You made my day, so thank you. In my first video, I talked about the importance of listening. We all need to listen well in order to speak well. In my second video, I'll talk about the importance of remembering the names of people and places. I'll also address the difference between a high context culture and a low context culture. And finally, I'll show you what I do when I come across a word that is difficult to pronounce. First things first. So what is the importance of remembering the names of people and places? First and foremost, it gives you the confidence in relating to people and approaching people. I remember a time when I spotted someone that I knew, but then I did not remember his name. I hesitated for a few seconds, but then I decided to walk up to him and start a conversation with him without calling him by his name. Remembering someone's name definitely gives you the confidence. Secondly, when you remember someone's name, it shows to the other person that you care about the person. And third, when you remember someone's name, you actually extend hospitality to the person because you open yourself up and give the person a chance to get to know you. And fourth, if you know how to pronounce people's names and remember their names, I believe that it gives you the confidence in teaching and also preaching and in communicating better with others. It clearly gives you advantages over people who do not remember or know how to pronounce certain names. So I highly encourage you to make every effort to remember people's names and learn how to pronounce names. I think it's important for us to make a mental note of people's names and then jot them down before we forget them. There's a Chinese saying that goes like this, the faintest ink is more powerful than the strongest memory. Let me say that again. The faintest ink is more powerful than the strongest memory. One of the things that I did on the very first day of the semester when I was teaching undergraduate students at Dallas Baptist University was to take pictures of students and then to put their names next to those pictures. Then I would go over those pictures and their names whenever I had time. Also, I prayed for them on a regular basis. So when I prayed for them, I would call them by their names, which reinforced uh, the memories. When we talk about names, it's important for us to also talk about titles, because there's a huge difference between a hierarchical culture and a non-hierarchical culture. If you find yourself in a hierarchical culture or high context culture, it's important for you to address people according to their age, their professions, and also going to their titles because people want to be treated by their professions or by their age. However, if you are in a non-hierarchical culture or low context culture, titles do not matter that much. In general, uh, the American culture or the cultures of English speaking people are quite informal so they usually go on a first name basis. Although in a professional settings or in school settings, uh, things are a little different. You don't want to call 
your professors by their first names. In rare cases, except in rare cases. Because if you are a doctoral student, like in the PhD program or in a doctoral ministry program, you might be given the permission to call your professors by their first names because you are older, because you are more experienced uh, in your professions. However, in most cases, you should make sure that you call your professors according to their titles. So Dr. Smith, Dr. Park, like that. So if you're not sure how to call someone, the best thing you can do is to ask that person, how should I address you? Then that person will let you know whether you need to call him or her by his title or her title, or you can simply call that person by his or her first name. And also, it's important for you to understand the culture of an organization or an institution. Some institutions and some organizations might be very conservative, and the people in high positions might want to be called by their titles. But in general, the American culture is a very informal culture. And so you can always go on a first name basis. But once again, the rule of thumb is to understand the culture of the organization of which you are a member. And also, you can always ask a question. How should I address you? In our names, we have first names, middle names, and last names. And most of the time, people will go by their first names. In a rare case, or sometimes occasionally, I think, some people might want to be called by their middle names. So once again, it all depends. But generally, people go by their first names. Remembering people's names is very important. It's a must, especially if you want to develop good relationships with other people. Yes, we get forgetful, but it's always better if you could remember the people's names that you meet uh, in your life. There are many names uh, that are difficult to pronounce in the Bible. How do you tackle those names? For me, I read through the entire Bible a few times while listening to the audio Bible. And then I took the time to jot down difficult names. I would go over them again and again and again until I feel comfortable pronouncing those names. And that helped me immensely, especially when I preach, when I teach, also when I talk about biblical figures. So if you are not familiar with the names in the Bible, I would highly recommend that you take the time to listen to audio Bibles and jot down those names that are difficult to pronounce and study them. What do I do when I come across a word uh, that is difficult to pronounce? This is what I do. I go to youtube.com. So I go to YouTube and then type in the word that I find difficult to pronounce. Let's just say I don't know how to pronounce the word Canaan. C-A-N-A-A-N. Canaan, Canaan, Canaan. I type in the word Canaan in the search engine and then hit enter. You see, there are several videos and I prefer the American pronunciation because I live and work here in the United States. So I choose that video and it's pronounced as Canaan, Canaan. How do you pronounce the following two words? W-A-C-O-N-O-L-A-T-H-E. I'd like you to try these two words. You can type in the two words and then learn how to pronounce those two words. How about people names? Let's think about these three names. I-S-A-A-C and M-O-S-E-S -S and M-C-N-A-B-B. -B. You can do the same thing. M-O-S-E-S. -E Moses. 
Moses. I S A A C is pronounced as Isaac. Isaac. I heard a lot of people pronounce Isaac in different ways. So the proper way to pronounce the word Isaac is Isaac. Isaac, not Isaac, not Isaac. It's pronounced as Isaac. God knows your name, and He cares about you. Be proud of your name and love your name. In this video, I talked about the importance of remembering the names of people and places. I also addressed the difference between a high context culture and a low context culture. And finally, I showed you what I do when I come across a word that is difficult to pronounce. In my next video, I'll show you how you can improve your listening skills by watching speeches, lectures, and sermons. Actually, I'll share a few clips of my sermons and speeches. Until then, dare to speak.